Hi, I'm Karalia from the Yoga Lunchbox, and today I'm here with Marcus and Karen of Yin Therapy. So Marcus and Karen, they've got a very similar history, actually. They're both um, performers. They were on stage in musical theatre, dancing and singing and doing what you do on stage, and they met in Cats. And since then, they have gone on to both do a 350-hour training with Brian Kest, Power Yoga, but then they started doing yin, and they did some trainings with Paul and Susie Grillick, fell in love with yin, and Marcus has since assisted uh, Paul and Susie in their recent Mexico training. So now they're in New Zealand, and they're going to be offering one of their teacher trainings here in New Zealand. So I wanted to speak to Marcus and Karen to find out more about yin, more about them, and more about yin therapy. So Welcome. Thanks, Caroline. Thank Great you. To be here. <laughs> Great to be here. So a lot of people are starting to hear about yin. I imagine, though, that not everyone has experienced yin. What is yin yoga, per se? Yoga. <laughs> <laughs> From the physical side, yin yoga is um, very easy to explain. It's You go into, uh, into yoga pose three to five minutes, long held stretches, and here comes the trick, without any muscle tension. And that's the difference... Oh to yang yoga. Mm -hmm. okay. So usually you, you would do yang yoga like ashtanga yoga, vinyasa flow, um, uh, yenga yoga, bikram yoga. And this is mainly physically for strengthening the muscle, stretching the muscle, get the cardiovascular system um, working. And this is all good. This mm -hmm. is all good. Um, the yin side is basically the complementary side. Yin yoga is long held stretches three to five wow. minutes sometimes 10 minutes sometimes even 15 minutes wow. um <laughs> that's a long time so could could that's, you be doing um a posture say yang style or yin style so from the outside perspective it might look the same but in one you're using active muscle tension and one you're not would that be accurate absolutely yep. yeah you could uh, do for example paschimottanasana Mm -hmm. is a is a the forward fold um, pose you can do in an active yang style you would use your muscles um, to to strengthen and to stretch it out to mm -hmm. make a really active pose but as well you can just lean forward round your back and drop let the gravity wow. let the gravity work and it's about surrendering in the pose basically mm -hmm. It is not working the pose. The, the pose works for you. The mm. gravity works for you. You surrender in the ground. You surrender in the pose. And this is a major difference. I've done a little bit of yin. And one thing I've noticed is it seems to be physically easier in some ways, but psychologically much more difficult. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. It's, that, it's been in that inactivity, trying yes. to calm your mind when you don't have anything to occupy yourself. It's... Uh, it's for a lot of people, a lot harder at the beginning. Mm. It does feel too like yin is becoming more and more widespread. Um, definitely in New Zealand yoga scene, I'm seeing it pop up more and more often. Why is that, do you think? Um, out of the necessity of, I think, I think our modern society, I think we're getting faster, quicker, stressier. Our mm -hmm. lives, just, ever since the age of the computer, it's just got sort of faster, 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 faster. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and we're seeing more stressed out people to the fact, to the point where even kids are coming stressed, getting stress syndromes. Um, and so it feels like it was an organic, organic ev evolution that yin yoga is coming more and more into the into the um, modern yoga scene. Mm, Just yeah. out of uh, we need that balance. Yang yoga is great for muscle strengthening and, and stretching, but. Yin yoga is the other half. It's that balancing pole that calms us, that de-stresses us on a physical and a mental level. Mm -hmm. So the two of you set up yin therapy. Can you tell us what yin therapy is exactly, what it's all about? Because you don't actually have a studio per se, do you? No. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I had a studio in, in Hamburg, which mm -hmm. I was treating after, after the um, career on stage. Um, I started to give deep tissue massages or uh, trained in deep tissue massage with Thai massage um, with um, passive yoga stretches where yin yoga started basically. I, um, I learned yin yoga after, after that but I was like, oh, oh my god, these are really mm -hmm. related. Thai massage and mm -hmm. yin yoga are really related. So I worked in that studio with Thai massage, with Reiki, with uh, yoga 
private sessions. Um, and it was a sort of an evolution from that. Um, when I started, well, Karen um, started the, to discover Paul Grilly through um, uh, Brian Kess' teacher training. And then she bought the DVDs and we watched it at home and I was like, oh my God, this anatomy is fantastic. I, I was always a little bit of a geek in that sense. <laughs> um, but the yin yoga practice, I was like, oh no, oh no, the long held stretches I know from dancing. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 I was I was in the yang style, the power style and go, go, go. And, um, and then she... Uh, then she introduced me to yin yoga after she did uh, her teacher training with Paul. And the first class I did, I couldn't walk afterwards. <laughs> I couldn't walk. Wow. Because I had 10, years of, uh, I've had 10 years of chronic back pain. And I was still in the yang yoga go mentality. And I was doing yin yoga like I was doing my yang yoga. Very intense. Oh. So you go in a forward bend, you go in a forward bend. You go like, oh, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And then get out and say, oh, oh, this wasn't good. <laughs> so after that, I couldn't work. She worked with me two weeks and um, to do another class and said the magic words, do 10, 20% less. Just yeah. fall into the pose, let the gravity work and enjoy it. And I did it, and then the next, the next morning I woke up, and I was pain-free. So that's why it started to, that I was like, oh my god, yin yoga must do something therapeutically. Mm -hmm. So I trained myself up to find out what it is. And I worked in my studio with, uh, with people with chronic back pain, with uh, post-operation, with frozen shoulder syndromes, and I had great successes with these people. And that's where it became, okay, I know now what it does. I know how it works. Scientifically, we can validate it even um, in some respect. So it is all good. We have to, do, we have to get the word, of, uh, word out and we have to teach it. That's why yin therapy. So now you've brought yin therapy down to New Zealand. You've moved down here, right? You're, you're, you're coming home, aren't you, Karen? This is coming home for you. It is so coming home for me. It's the, the home of my heart and I was away for 23 years so uh, it feels wonderful to be down, down here again and, and we're so excited to share something that we're very passionate about with um, my fellow Kiwis. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that because you have a lot of things on offer this year through Yin Therapy, one of which is a level one 50 hour uh, yoga teacher training in Yin in Anatomy. So tell us about that. What's it all about? Well, the kickoff is uh, our 50-hour training of, all in all, it's a 200-hour yin yoga and anatomy teacher training. Mm. And we go through, uh, through the nine level of awareness. Uh, Paul really teaches that from the, uh, from the de most densest uh, material within your body, the bone, mm -hmm. muscle, and fascia, really dense material, up to chi, emotion, thought to the very subtle energies in, within your body. So we're doing the whole range in the 200 hour program, starting with the anatomy. Oh, uh, to, really as a base to get the, A, to get the pictures, uh, the inner pictures of the wonderful fascia network, which we work, mm -hmm. that's our main tissue, which we work. So the the yang internal yoga. understanding of, of the, the, that matter as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. And um, we work in yang yoga muscle. Mm -hmm. And in yin yoga, mainly fascia, the mm. fascia. So you get a great understanding of that huge network within in our body. So for those who don't know what fascia is, because a lot of people don't, even a lot of yoga teachers don't necessarily understand what fascia is. Can you give us like a, a nice succinct description of it? Fascia is almost everything in our body. Mm. <laughs> it is. It's our, um, the most people know the term connective tissue. Mm -hmm. And now, since we have, uh, since 2007, there was the first fascia congress, um, fascia was, could not be researched because there was not uh, uh, the, the equipment, the specialized the equipment to, yeah. to measure it. And since, the, um, since 2003, there was the equipment there and they could measure it. There was a handful full of people who went into that research. 2007, they found the first, um, they had the first fascia congress with 
amazing results. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it is the connective tissue in our body. It holds everything together. It's the glue. It's the ligament. It's the tendon. It's the capsules around our joint. It's a three-dimensional network within our body which keeps us together. It is a sheath of our organs. It is a sheath around our brain. It is the connects, form of our muscles. It connects yeah. each cell in our body. So, so from a yoga perspective then, when we're stretching our hamstrings, right, say in a forward bend, I'm just thinking if the fascia in our feet is tight and holding, then that, because the fascia is interconnected all the way through the body, that's yeah. going to affect the way that our hamstrings are responding because it's not actually necessarily the muscles, is it? That's what's going on. It's the, it's the fascia that we're working with, not the muscles. Is that correct? I'm sort of visualizing in my head what it's like. It's, it's both of those things, but I can see how um, understanding fascia from a yogic perspective gives you a far more holistic and integrated understanding of what's happening in the body. Absolutely, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely, we always drive the, the, the point home of a short lecture in the sense of that you have that uh, three-dimensional network which connects everything in your body, mm. to your skin, down to your bone, through the muscles. Um, when you stimulate something in your forward bend, for example, in your hamstrings, you stimulate the, um, uh, the sole of your feet, you stimulate the back. Up, to, up to the neck, yeah. up mm. to the front of your face. And we have uh, muscle chains, we have fascia chains with, with yeah. our, in our body. So through the trainings, we explain all that. How yeah. it works, um, what poses work in a direction where you have a linear direction or more spread out direction in all the directions. So what to stimulate, when to stimulate organs, how to feel that, and, and, and. So there's a lot to learn in this kind, in our trainings. Um, and we, give, we go from the anatomical level to the energetic level. So we start with the anatomy, get that out of the way, get the dense material out of the way so you can focus on the energy of See, your I body. thought yin would be really easy to teach because it's, it's easier in a way than yang because you're just telling people, oh, here's the pose, here's where you put your body, you know, and then they sit there for three minutes doing <laughs> nothing, right? But it, it sounds to me like teaching yin is a whole different ballgame. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's much more complex than you think. Um, I, I adore teaching yin yoga in, in some respects of what you're saying, but actually because in that three minute, five minute time, you have the opportunity to, uh, to really help people individually. It's really hard in a yasa flow class to really be able to get in there before they're changing the pose to, sort of, to assist them. And you have the opportunity to go around the class and uh, really look at the individual body before you, the individual person before you, and assist them to find their very unique individual pose. Uh, and that's largely what our yin yoga training about, is about, is about just understanding and discovering how very different we all are and adjusting the poses, the poses that we we that are in the book is the sort of start point and then you're asked to really f go on a search for yourself with the knowledge without with the teacher's assistance to find your unique position mm. yes. and that can only be done when you have that sort of anatomy knowledge behind you and understand how very different we are mm -hmm. and that's something that I didn't know at the beginning at all I, I started with the younger yoga and sort of which you know I loved because I was coming from a ballet background. I was like, great, just tell me how it's supposed to look, and I'll make it look like that. <laughs> it was very superficial um, because I was had my dancer's brain on, and to go from the other end, to go really from the inside out, and go, okay, how do I want this to feel? Uh, this is the this is the function of the pose. I want to work this part of my body. Okay, in this archetypal pose that I've been given. I'm not feeling it there. I'm feeling it in my back because my back's there's something going on with my back. Okay, how do I need to adjust and um, and and uh, create the pose new for myself mm -hmm. to get to the part that I want to be working at? Um, so it's function over mm. aesthetics. That's we we always repeating that sort of pause mantra as well. Mm, We're yeah. getting away from how it's supposed to look according to the the yoga magazines and to how it's supposed to feel because that's why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times, a lot of the times, uh, the specialty of the trainings as well, or Paul's training and so our training, is to find out about the skeletal variations, the individual bone structure within us, 
-hmm. to uh, our because function is our uh, approach to yoga what is the function it can be a physical function it can be an energetical a mental function um, but when we look at the physical point and we get that out of the way in the first hundred hours we always look for the stimulation of the tissue so sometimes the bones are in the way um, when when a joint is formed different from one to another person mm -hmm. then a bone can be in the way so we have to find out individually how do I get to that stimulation of that pose how do I stimulate my hamstrings when I don't feel that forward bend that I actually can stimulate it maybe I have to open my legs a little bit maybe mm -hmm. I, and we find out as teachers why that is and how to find ways to teach our students how to get to their individual mm. stimulation. Okay. Um, that's why it's so complicated um, oh, yeah. to teach yin yoga in, the, in that kind of way. But yin yoga itself to teach is not difficult. Because mm. I wondered why there was such a heavy anatomy focus you know, in the yin teacher training. But as you speak, I'm starting to understand why. It feels like that deeper understanding of anatomy underpins everything yeah. and it's not just knowing well, here, that this is where my hamstrings are or this is where my trapeze muscles are it's, no, you know, it's, not at all. it's far more um, a, practical and applicable than that because not everyone likes anatomy like really <laughs> yeah <laughs> right and it's like oh my god how do I remember all those different muscles and what they do and where they are um, and yet it feels to me like a yin training like this because it's so practical that it, it becomes easier to remember how do people yeah. find it? Is, it? is it too much of an information overload at times? or uh, It can be an overload for some people, um, but it's always exciting because you, yeah. you're in that training, you get surprised by how different we are. We, we look at the different bone structure. We look at the different person in itself uh, from the inside, and people are surprised how vastly different one to another person can be. Then we, have to, we make them listen, First, we t tell the story, we make them see it on pictures, and then we actually make them feel it within their bodies. Mm -hmm. And we test it so that people can see from one to another person, we can have a difference of 60 degree or 70 degree uh, and difference and of range, uh, of range of motion. Mm -hmm. And this is a wake up call, and this is exciting. And when you do the first test, when the first test mm -hmm. is over, uh, people, are, people are just like, yeah. oh, I want more. Mm -hmm. I want to see more. I want to see more. And I think so, it's also because it is so practical and because you are you go on a self-discovery journey of yourself, you're like, oh, my God, that's yeah. why I'm having, I've am having been having trouble with this position or that's why I've been, you know, torturing myself trying to get my leg around the back of my head and it's never worked. <laughs> um, you know, it could be because of skeletal variation that you're never, no matter if you sit there eight hours a day, you're never going to get there, mm -hmm. depending on your individual circumstances yeah. and um, I have to say um, just to just to say just promote Marcus <laughs> because he's from a performer because we're both from performer backgrounds I mean when he does these anatomy lectures they're incredibly entertaining there's nothing <laughs> serious about it actually sort of tears and laughter so uh, we definitely make it fun That's because awesome. we know what it's like to have a theory science lesson we know it yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, here's a question I want to ask you, because I've always been curious about this um, to do with yin. So, in yin, you talk about chi and meridians. Yet, in yoga, we talk about prana and nadis. And I'm curious as to why, why does yin deviate and, and use Chinese um, terminology rather than the Indian terminology or the Sanskrit terminology? That would be a good question to Paul Gurley. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It's I gotta awesome. Get it's all the same thing. No, it's just, and it came from the yeah, Taoist. Yeah. So in Yin Yoga, um, the you have to see the the history of Yin Yoga. Mm -hmm. Yin Yoga started in in Taoist Yoga from mm -hmm. Polit Singh. Polit Singh was a was a teacher or is a teacher in America um, who was taught by a Chinese uh, guy um, martial arts. Martial art. Mm -hmm. Um, it was monkey kung fu, and one part of this training was Taoist yoga. Mm. So Paul really, after about seven, eight, nine years of um, of Ashtanga yoga, he thought, uh, "Well, I can't get deeper. I can't. I don't know why I don't progress in these certain poses." And he saw Paul Paulit Singh on TV, and 
he saw that Daoist Yoga long held stretches and he was like, wow, maybe that's the missing part. Maybe that's, that's the missing part to get deeper, to get further, to move. So he went to Poli Singh, studied with him, and uh, he found out quickly that uh, it was very naive to think that he gets deeper through that. But he found out a lot more about his body mm -hmm. through Yin Yoga. Um, and then she, he taught somebody called Sarah Powers, which is another international teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and she called it at one point Yin Yoga. So the, the tradition comes from actually the Chinese background, the Taoist uh, Yoga, yeah. Yin yeah. and Yang. And uh, Sarah, as far as I know, changed the name uh, to Yin Yoga and then Bo Grilly as well and Poli Tsing as well, just because it describes it better. The long held stretches are more yin in nature than the yang yoga. But we're talking about we're talking about uh, energy. If you have the meridian system, the uh, the uh, chakra system, which is the overlaying system, uh, you have uh, prana, another form of energy. We talk about nadis. It, nadis. Um, we knew we use the Chinese because it has the the root of the Chinese. It has a root in China. Mm -hmm. So then, who would you say this training is for? Like, for is, is, is it just people who want to teach yin, for example, or would other people get value out of it? Uh, how much experience do you need to have with yoga? Uh, it's you know from, we've been doing a lot of these trainings in Europe already, and we've had a wide range of uh, people coming to do the trainings. Yes, it's definitely for experienced uh, yoga teachers already, but also aspiring ones. And uh, but also for people who just want to have a discover a deeper understanding for themselves and their body, uh, a lot of people get benefit from that. And then we've also had people, physiotherapists, body workers. Mm. What else wow. had our, who else have we had in our trainings? Um, Therapists with animals. Oh yes, yeah. We had somebody who who oh, translated Yin Yoga to um, working with horses. Mm. It's not a joke. It was really wonderful, mm. wonderful work. We got wonderful feedback there. Natural person masseurs. I was surprised uh, about the range of people who are mm. coming, actually. Um, in the beginning, I thought it was just for yoga teachers. And we have a range of people who are um, 30 years uh, yoga teachers already to people um, who are who never done yoga before and just want to do Yin Yoga because they heard about it. It's wow. really a huge mm. range. And everyone gets something out of it. So. so this year, just to be clear, you're offering a fifty year a fifty hour um, module, is that what you call it? A module? That's right. And yes. this is six days long. And where where is it that you're offering it? It's happening in Hot Yoga Auckland in um, um, in August, September. Okay, fantastic. Okay. So if people want to know more about the training or they want to register, where should they come? Where should they, how should they contact you? They can either contact us and say that they're interested, but to actually register, they need to go to hotyogaauckland.com. Okay. And okay. there you can uh, get more information, find out about the prices and um, book your course. Fantastic. Well, Karen and Marcus, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us your very obvious love and passion for yin yoga. I'm really excited that you're here in New Zealand offering this. I think there's a real need for it, and I'm looking forward to doing more yin in my life for sure. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Carly. Thank you for the interview. <laughs>